the whole process of gas exchange relies on diffusion. Diffusion of oxygen from the alveoli in the lungs um, into the blood and diffusion of carbon dioxide from the blood into the alveolus and then out. Okay, so the whole process really comes down to this idea of fixed law and how fixed law is a relationship that explains what are the characteristics of a structure that allow diffusion, the, the rate of diffusion to be higher. Okay, so let's just quickly um, summarize or quickly go through fixed law, remind ourselves of that, uh, and then we'll talk about how the lungs sat satisfies the, the conditions of fixed law that allow the rate of diffusion to be higher. Okay, so remember, the rate of diffusion is proportional to the surface area of the exchange surface multiplied by the concentration gradient that it can generate and divided by the diffusion distance or the distance of diffusion. If the surface area is higher, rate of diffusion will be higher. Okay, if the concentration gradient is higher, that would make the rate of diffusion higher. And if the diffusion distance is smaller, then the rate of diffusion will be higher. So we want this to be small. Okay, so now that we've summarized that, we really need to then look at how the lungs achieves those things. How does the lungs, how do the lungs achieve a high surface area? How does it maintain its concentration gradient? And how does it satisfy the requirements of smaller diffusion distances? So before we go into those things, let's just remind ourselves of how the lungs um, function to allow gas exchange between the blood and the lungs is the individual inhales okay and upon inhaling okay so let's just say that inhaled air contains high levels of oxygen okay so person inhales that inhaled air goes via the bronchioles into the alveolus okay so the inhaled air contains a high percentage of oxygen okay because the alveolus contains a high percentage of oxygen or a high level of oxygen and the blood that is flowing the deoxygenated blood that's flowing from the heart via the Pulmonary, uh, the pulmonary artery arriving to the lungs then has a relatively lower level of oxygen. So this is a concentration gradient. We have oxygen at a high level in the alveolus, oxygen at a low level in the deoxygenated blood. In contrast, the deoxygenated blood, remember, has removed a lot of carbon dioxide from the respiring cells of the body. And so in contrast, the carbon dioxide levels are very high. Okay, the carbon dioxide levels are very high, whereas relatively, relative to the blood in the alveolus, in the fresh air that's been inhaled, there is a relatively lower level of carbon dioxide in the alveolus. Again, this is a concentration gradient. And so, the oxygen diffuses down its concentration gradient, into the blood, there to bind hemoglobin that have a high affinity for oxygen, and the carbon dioxide, in contrast, diffuses from the blood into the alveolus down its concentration gradient, and from there, the person then exhales, okay, back that goes, back up there, back out, okay? person exhales um, and the air is forced 
out. The air containing the high concentration of carbon dioxide forced out. Then we, the person inhales again, raises the oxygen level in the alveolus again, and so the process can continue. So really, um, this that is the process, and that, that you should have covered at GCSE, I believe. Um, but now we, we have to look at what are the features of the lungs that keeps this process going efficiently, and what potentially um, could happen if the process, if any of those uh, things are not kept at an optimum level. So let's go through now, um, in relation to each of these uh, key points from Fick's law, how the structure of the lungs and the function addresses um, these things and really optimizes this structure for gas exchange. So we'll start with the surface area. Okay, so what is it about the lungs that, that ensures that it has a high surface area? A few things. So, how should we do this? So let's say, what are all the surface area related points? So, first of all, the, the, the most obvious one is that there are many alveoli. Individually, an alveolus doesn't have a high surface area. It's because you have many of those alveoli to make up the lungs, that's what gives the high surface area. So the fact that there's many alveoli, that is what gives the lungs a high surface area. Next point, related to surface area, is that there are, there's a large network of capillaries that wrap themselves around the alveolus, providing the other half of the equation, so to say. Um, so the, the, the large surface area of the alveoli itself is not enough. It needs a high surface area or a high number of capillaries with which to exchange the gases. Okay, so the large network of capillaries also ensures that the alveolus has something to exchange the gas with. Okay, so that is surface area. That is how the lungs ensures its high surface area. Now, how does it ensure a low diffusion distance? Two main ways. The alveolus itself so now we are talking about diffusion and distance. So the diffusion distance, the low diffusion distance, actually this was high surface area, wasn't it? And this is low diffusion distance. How do we maintain a low diffusion distance? Well, a few things. The epithelium that makes up the alveolus is a special type of epithelium called squamous epithelium. It has a more thin and flat structure, therefore reducing the distance that anything would have to diffuse through that cell, okay? So, the fact that the alveolus is made of squamous epithelium, right? It's flat structure, ensures that that distance to diffuse through the epithelium of the alveolus is small. Next, the capillaries, okay? The capillaries also have walls which are one cell thick, okay? So, again, the distance that oxygen has to diffuse in total from the alveolus into the blood, it has to go through the alveolus epithelium as well as the endothelial wall, or the endothelial cell of the capillary, okay? So, capillary wall, is one cell, one cell thick, and that's important also, okay? And that the alveolus and the, and, uh, the capillary are very close together. There's not a lot of space between them, okay? So alveoli, alveolar, and capillary walls, close, 
they're close together. So in combination, all those three things ensure that the distance that any gas has to diffuse to get from one place to the other is small. And so this number here is going to be small and so the rate of diffusion can be maximized. Okay, so that is diffusion distance. Now the last one is the, for me, it's the most interesting one. Okay, so the last one is how do we maintain, how does the lung, how do the lungs work to maintain a high concentration gradient? How, how, how do we keep the oxygen levels in the alveolus high so that it's always um, moving down its concentration gradient into the blood? Okay, and how do we keep the carbon dioxide levels in here low so that we continue to allow it to diffuse from the blood into the alveolus? And the answer is really in the ventilation of the lungs, the working of the rib cage, the, the diaphragm and, and the intercostal muscles, they are all working together to ensure the inflating and deflating of the lungs to make sure that there's this continuous refreshing of air in the alveolus, okay? And because of that, we can maintain uh, high oxygen levels in the alveolus. So, the high concentration gradient in part is maintained by the constant ventilation of the lungs. Constant ventilation. Okay, so the constant ventilation ensures ensures high O2 levels in alveolus and low CO2 levels in alveolus. Okay, which maintains that concentration gradient. Okay? Now, there's other things also that allow this concentration gradient to be maintained. So, the constant ventilation is one thing, but one of the ways that that ventilation is maintained is by keeping the airways clear of obstruction. Okay? Um, and how do we do that? So, in breathing, while we are breathing, we are constantly inhaling particulates. We are breathing in pathogens that could cause infection. And if that were to happen, the lining, sorry, the, the airways of the lungs would be affected, okay? So one way that this airway is kept clear is by the constant working of these epithelial cells in the, in the bronchioles, okay? Now, these cells are called goblet cells. I will label it G, and these are columnar epithelial cells, ciliated epithelial cells that are next to them. Now, the goblet cells produce mucus, okay, they produce mucus, and this mucus traps, is responsible for trapping particulate matter, it's responsible for trapping pathogens that could cause infection, and the cilia move beat in a way to move the mucus up the back of the airway into the buccal cavity where you can swallow it or cough it out or sneeze it out okay thereby you can get rid of pathogens that might cause infection in the lungs or any particulate matter that might itself cause obstruction in the airways thereby maintaining clear airways thereby maintaining effective ventilation thereby maintaining the concentration gradients needed to um, ensure the diffusion of the gases. One thing I forgot to mention is that the concentration gradient is also maintained by the constant flow of blood through the capillary, okay? Because what this does is it ensures continuous supply of deoxygenated blood which means that on one side we're maintaining blood with low oxygen, whereas in the alveolus we are maintaining a high oxygen levels, and so the concentration gradient is in that direction, okay? So, we'll add here that the other thing 
that is maintaining the concentration gradient is the constant flow of blood ensures supply of blood with low O2 and high CO2 because this blood with high CO2 that means that we have a high CO2 level in the blood which will CO2 can then diffuse into the alveolus oxygen can then diffuse into the blood okay so by the time that we get to this situation over here by that time we have high O2 in the blood and low CO2 because it's diffused out. Okay, and that is the lungs, guys. That's the basics of the lungs. Remember, a lot of the lungs, a lot of the things about the lungs, it will be easier to remember if you're thinking about it in terms of fixed law. Okay, because then from there you can think about, all right, what is it about the lungs that's maintaining high surface area? What is it about it that's allowing the low diffusion distance? And what is it that's allowing the high concentration gradient? And then all the rest of it will come to you. One final thing I'll add is we could talk much more about this in relation to the effect of smoking on the lungs, um, the effect of a bacterial infection on the lungs, or the effect of cystic fibrosis on the lungs. Probably that depends on your exam board. But what, without having to discuss all that in detail, one thing I would say is that you're much more likely to be successful talking about those things if you can think about what their effect is going to be on this situation. Um, for example, um, cystic fibrosis, it narrows, it, the extra mucus narrows the lumen and that affects the ventilation. How is that going to affect the concentration gradient? Um, bacterial infections often lead to damaged uh, lung tissue. What effect would it have on the surface area of the, of the lungs if we were to lose lots of our alveoli to bacterial infection and the damage caused by that? Um, you gotta, if you think of what effect those things are going to have on these and then what effect that's going to have on the rate of diffusion and then what effect that's going to have on eventually the amount of oxygen in the blood, that's going to take you a long way to answering those questions better. Okay.